Hey, what's up, guys? And welcome to another episode of We Need to Talk. I know it has been two months since we've done an episode, but I'm your host, Melinda, and I'm joined by my husband, John Bull. Hey. Carmel's going to be back with us next week. We've got a lot to talk about. First and foremost, the reason we haven't done a podcast in two months is because we had a baby. Yeah, and the world fell apart. And the world fell apart, hence why Carmel also is not here, and we're going to He fell out. apart. <laughs> He's Carmel is actually not falling apart during this time, but we're going to chat with him next week when he's back. We're going to figure out how to uh, do the podcast remotely, um, working out some sound stuff and having him call in. But he will be back with us next week. Husband's with me because husband and I are quarantined together in uh, in, in our house. Get a um, girl. Woo, woo, woo. Um, we're kind of deliriously tired because of this child that we have. Yeah. She's amazing. Not going to lie. But um, let's talk a little bit about... What's happened in the world the last couple months? And of course, we're going to go into more detail once Carmel is back with us next week. Um, but COVID-19, uh, it has reigned terror uh, globally um, since, I don't know, I mean, it started in December, but I would say the world really was hit hard um, March, February, February, March. What, what would you say, babe? Um, yeah, I guess it just depends on where you live in the world. Um, I, I think that the huge issue is what, you know, initially, uh, blossomed in China. Um, and then I think I saw some, some statistic that close to half a million people, um, had, had traveled out of China mm. in the interim, uh, which just leads to infections everywhere else Absolutely. Um, before everyone clamps down. So this is the thing is like, it's, I, I, obviously you can, Everyone is just like constantly refreshing their news feed, yeah. Um, both with this type of news and with uh, you know other news to, to counterbalance that, because what else can they what else can they do? Um, but it's 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 an interesting it's it's an interesting time to be living in uh, and knowing that you are gonna you're going through something that's gonna be covered in textbooks. Absolutely, this is like I was just thinking that our child, our daughter's name is Sienna. She's probably gonna learn about this in high school. And before um, you guys right around in 2020 or way I before guess. that it's gonna help define her right that's true that's it's, true it's gonna be it's you know someone who's born in 1919 aside from being you know part of the um world war one mm-hmm. is, is gonna forever have that spanish flu be be put in them because it's it's uh it's it's gonna affect everyone that everyone you know so right. everyone you know is gonna know someone or something right. which Leads me to the next question. Like, I'm curious, like, what our path forward is after this. Like, when when there's an end in sight, and then how the world is going to be different once we quote unquote recover from this. Because I mean, recovery is going to take quite a long time. You know, currently, mo- for the most part, most of the world is quarantined. There's still those little pockets that are being really stubborn and aren't doing their part to help end this and slow the spread. But I I'm, I'm really curious, like, what the world's going to look like a year from now. I don't know if anyone knows. I, I don't know. I don't right. know what the end of the summer is going to look like. Um, right. I, I, I don't think that the world will. The thing is, if I don't think anything, we will not be, I, I think we'll have some form of social distancing or, or other, uh, anything like, like that mm-hmm. until like an actual vaccine is around. You think it'll around? continue to be implemented? Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, in some fashion, right? Right, right, right But the right. other thing is, even if you say right now, hey, you know what? We we're over the worst of it. Let's everyone just return to normal, which uh, it doesn't seem like a, a very wise thing to do. Right, right. Um, you still have to get it through people's head. Like, why would you just go to a mall? You know, no. like who, yeah. who's, but it's just, there are some people who are going to be intrepid and do that for stuff sure, and other people sure. are just going to ease back into it. But in the meantime, you have, um, retailers and, and everyone else. And then the, the people snap to those retailers, like if no one's in and buying things, mm-hmm. then it's, it's just, we're just going to have to negotiate all this stuff. I mean, there's a level of fear that comes with it though. It's like you, people are going to ease back into their normal life, but there is going to be this constant, you know, um, fear and this hesitation of like, Ugh, you know. Is, is it still out there? Am I going to get this virus? Is Am I going to, yeah. you know, die? I mean, I mean, the deaths obviously are terrible, but just how many people have contracted this virus and have gone through it? We've had several friends that have gotten it, and their symptoms are just unlike anything they've ever experienced. Yeah. So, like, why wouldn't you kind of be hesitant to go back to your normal life, you know? Absolutely. And it's not even... I think this, this thing is touching every aspect of society. One thing that you can quickly miss out on or not think of is 
people don't stop having heart attacks or strokes that are unrelated to COVID, right? right but right. like, or other other um, medical issues that may not be emergency right mm -hmm. now, but they they could very well quickly become that. Mm -hmm. um, are you going to go to a hospital? Why would you go to, you know, like that's, that's, you're going to push off all that stuff. And the other thing is, I don't know if you've got, you look at the unemployment numbers, right? Mm -hmm. a, a, a large swath of people yeah, have been cool. laid off or furloughed. And if you do have something, a pressing medical concern, that could be the coronavirus or it could be something else. Mm -hmm. Do you have health insurance right now? Because in this country, we tie that to employment. Right. Um, it's the whole stuff. The whole issue is fraught. And I, I don't, and that's the thing. It's. Part of it is the the fear of actually physically going out, you for know, sure, to, to sure. a mall. And the other thing is, are you just even going to spend money? You know, mm -hmm. like, are advertisers spending the money to, to advertise to catch you on Instagram, right? And are you buying that new sweater? Mm -hmm. Why would you spend money right now when you're thinking about, you know, buying toilet paper? Well, I'm curious, though. Do you think... Like as far well, we know that the economy is kind of crashing, uh, at least in, in our country. But I feel like there has been for certain businesses a complete like overhaul of purchases, like for deliveries, for like Amazon, for things like that. Like well, Amazon doesn't need any money, but don't you don't you think like as far as their businesses go? Yeah, I mean, there's certain uh, the folks that have really benefited, but that's mm -hmm. that's the case in in any of these things, you mm -hmm. know, like in any, uh, crisis, you're going to have certain people who are just really good, you know, like yeah. the 3M, the, the, you know, the, the mask manufacturer and the, the other just giant manufacturer, mm -hmm. um, is you know, just doing incredible business as you will have with, with other, with other ones. It's, it's more interesting to me to see what stays post right. all this stuff. I think the way things are trending is just to have, um, a complete black hole, mm. <laughs> but to see where economically, but then see where things look at the, you know, in the third quarter and the fourth quarter to really get a sense of everything. Right. Um, it's just, it's, it's interesting. I think the, the way that makes the most sense to, you know, re-enter the workforce or restart the economy or, you know, whatever expression you want to use is to, if we had some kind of, um, uh, antibody testing to see right. who's and actually been exposed. That, yeah. Because honestly, if if I you know were unfortunate enough to have gotten that, um, to, to have gotten COVID nineteen, and then to come out on the other side of it, and I, it's like the world is open to you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like who's you know like you're right. looking at a doorknob and no, you're not thinking sure. the same things Absolutely. that you know someone who hasn't had that. And there's been speculation that there is some sort of uh, herd immunity in California because there was a period of time, I remember, and I think you were even a part of this mm. in November and December when people were just really sick and went to the doctor and the flu was ruled out and nobody knew what it was. Yeah. But that would, you know, if it did originate in China, then like they're saying, um, you know, that would mean someone would have had to travel to China, bring it back here and then, and then you know. Yeah, so the, the we'll perfect, have to figure that out. The perfect kind of, if you were designing a pandemic to, to infect everyone, You'd have it be really catchy, right? It's which this thing is, and then have a large uh, percentage of people be asymptomatic, whether or not that's in the interim period before they exhibit symptoms, or whether that's overall they just might have a cough that they just ascribe to, you know, a, a night out, mm -hmm. a late night out, or something. Um, which all this this stuff just checks those boxes, right? right. So when you have, you know, in a in a new state in our country or a new country or a new territory somewhere, the first sign of this thing is an older person in a nursing home, it should scare you because yeah. that means it's like, that's not the first person. That person is sedentary, right? right that right. thing has been living out there for a while. Um, so this thing is out there and it's, it's, it's crazy to me how this is, it has the entire world in its grip right now. And in all the media attention is focused on this and all our scientists are yeah. by and large is buying in, which is, that's a good thing to see of collective action. Um, but we still don't quite know. You know how yeah. how widespread this is. Mm -hmm. We we don't quite know. It's it's an interesting thing to have this thing again around for five months, six months, however long this is going on right now, and we're still not quite. We don't have it buckled up yet. Right. I was looking at um, the CDC timeline, of, and we're going to talk a little bit more about this with Carmel next week because I know he has a lot of thoughts, but just about the timeline of H one N one. Because, you know, people have been comparing, like, oh, well, the flu, you know, people die from the flu, blah, blah, yada, yada, yada. And one of the things that I noticed in the timeline was just that there was preparedness on within the Obama mm -hmm. administration's part. 
and how they handled it is why it didn't become what this has become. I yeah. think that's a huge part of it. Yeah, I mean, with with any kind of bad news, there's always a danger of um, powers that be gaslighting or yeah. saying, "Hey, look, you know, this isn't an actual thing," or it's you know, it's you just downplay the the risks associated with it. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it ends up working, right? Because the the things just fizzle out, and right, it's great, right, right. and then you look smart, and it's great, and then you don't have to. You know, you don't bear the brunt and suffer the um, the economic woes of, of sounding the alarm bell too quickly. Um, but other times when you're wrong, you you're really wrong. Yeah, it's just it's it's doubling down on something, mm-hmm. and it's uh, again the the way that things have gone in this country and then some other countries. It's you can't get that time back, but you kind of wish you could. Right. Yeah. I think another thing that I was kind of shocked by I didn't think about is one of the businesses that's really being heavily affected by the pandemic was the postal service. Yeah. That well, shocked me. I mean, I, I didn't even think about that. And I'm it, like, it makes sense. It's, it's, it's an odd, uh, that particular agency, it's an odd one because it's, it's strangely political. Yeah. Um, yeah. the way it's, it's a huge loss running venture and it has been for a long time and, and Republicans don't, ne- don't see the, the point, um, of you know just sinking more money into it Mm -hmm. um so this might this is gonna they're gonna come to loggerheads or they already have Mm -hmm. uh, both the the left and the right over the postal service and i'm interested to see where things go because there's certain things where the government has just has taken over um certain industries right and we don't as a country we don't really like that we Mm -hmm. we like to see things um it's in the dna of the country to see see certain industries privatized and and subject to competition right Mm -hmm. um but with the postal service now it's there's implications of what about like mail in ballots in november yeah so and i'm sure that they're actually looking at that stuff if it if it looks really you know if things look if shutting down the postal service or not saving it you know, from insolvency um and in a way that they just for whatever reason have their um service interrupted mm-hmm. um if that looks really favorable for Trump Mm -hmm. uh, for, for mail-in purposes, Mm -hmm. then I don't know. It's, I was going to ask, and I am hoping that we can get Drexel to call in um, while we're still, you know, hold up in here, (laughs) but I'm curious. Yeah. How all of this is going to affect the election, but you saying that it's like a little light bulb came on and it's like, I can see Trump manipulating that. Yeah. I mean, in general, when you have times of crisis, it's when people in power, um, have more of a blank check to grab more power. Yeah. It's not very true. It's a really good time to be in power if you are halfway competent in <laughs> um in your role and there's a question here if if that's the case right. if you are halfway competent. Right. Um if you are though there's a tremendous um opportunity to to really kind of um to to be to get more stuff for yourself. Mhm. You know. What do you think is the biggest lesson that we as just a people should take away from this? Because I, I wrote a blog about this and you guys can check it out on we need to talk to I'm going to try to be more consistent, obviously now that I'm back and uh, getting into routine with, with our, our, our baby, our baby girl. But I think it's a lesson in humanity also because, mm-hmm. and I talked, you, you, you said the phrase collective action and I use it in the blog that you helped me with, but I think it's teaching people to care about other people and uh, to make decisions that will affect other people, you know, besides yourselves. But I'm curious what your thoughts are as far as the lesson and the takeaway from this whole situation. Being quarantined, having your job taken away, having to, you know, call people and actually have, you know, relations yeah. with people in a different way. I mean, I don't I don't know if there's any one thing. I, I like the the optimism in that mm-hmm. because that's exactly it's you're taking stock of what's important, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, there's certain other things that are just this is a really cool thing to look at, especially with Western democracies, right? Where we pride ourselves on individual freedoms and, and doing the things that I want to do mm-hmm. with no one else telling me what to do. Mm-hmm. They've kind of fallen in line of getting behind this quarantine stuff. Yeah. And that's something that I I wouldn't have expected. And it's the same thing with Italy, which also has kind of a, a rule breaking individual individualistic nature built into themselves, mm-hmm. they followed this thing. Like yeah. obviously there are gaps and people still kind of um, circumventing uh, the lockdown measures, but by and large, it's working. Yeah, and that's yeah, yeah. Some, that's that's again that's not like um, an authoritarian China style 
um, lockdown. It's other people just kind of policing themselves. And that's that's been great to see. And realizing um, that it will make a difference and yeah. it matters. Yeah. The, the downsides of all this stuff is seeing how, you know, the richest country in the entire world, which is America, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm is by and large living paycheck to paycheck yeah that's the that's how things i mean in general you have 300 million plus people there are plenty of people who aren't going to have you know who have always or who always will live paycheck to paycheck um for circumstances beyond their control or within their control both um but by and large you're gonna have just large swaths of people that are just really struggling Absolutely. out of this and I the mean, thing is the numbers that, with unemployment were yeah. staggering to me it was like 6.6 6 million right. or something like that yeah and this is i mean obviously we're we could be in a much worse position than right. you know but we're here being able to quarantine which mm-hmm. is a privilege in and of itself and yeah. we're here you know recording a, a podcast while our baby sleeps in a mm-hmm. bassinet you know yeah. <laughs> this is, right. these these things are great but right, it's, right, so it's right. also like it's re- realizing how fortunate you are despite the dire circumstances and knowing that anything can be taken away at at, at a moment's notice mm-hmm. so we'll see and then again looking at the future is i don't, I don't know it's hard to I know don't i mean nobody know. knows what's gonna happen i mean there I'm were curious. a few waves with the spanish flu yeah right that's the only thing we can really compare, compare it to. It's right. like it's a once in a lifetime, once in a century type of pandemic mm-hmm. event. Um, obviously, the world is much more now connected now. Mm-hmm. Um, so you can see online, you know, you could see that the, how many deaths were there in Spain, you know, in the last 24 hours. You can see that stuff. Whereas I don't, you, you couldn't do that 100 years ago um, quite so soon. So you can see that. And then you can also see, you know, scientists sharing um uh, their findings with with one another and and world leaders actually communicating mm-hmm. or, or states working with the federal government in real time um that stuff is all great to see right um you know we're just gonna have to wait it out and see we are we're in los angeles for those of you that are listening um, and didn't know that and we are our orders till may 15th i don't know I, may I, 15th okay thank you <laughs> that's what i was gonna say <laughs> you like that's when i was gonna leave right <laughs> Um, so wherever you're listening, we hope that you are safe. We hope that you are listening to your uh, elected officials, your governor, your mayor, whatever they're telling you to do. If they're not, if they're telling you to go outside, don't listen to them. Uh, listen to us. <laughs> listen to us. Uh, but next week we will be back with Carmel. John will be with us again because he has nowhere else to be. <laughs> yeah. And our baby will babble. And our baby, yes, our baby will babble probably. Hopefully she'll be sleeping. Um, but stay safe, you guys, and make sure you are subscribed and you're following us on Instagram and Facebook, We Need Talk the Podcast. Also check out the blog, we need to talk the blog.com, and we will talk to you next week. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Instagram at We Need to Talk the Podcast and Twitter at underscore we need to talk underscore.